My task today is to discuss the links between sex trafficking and illegal pornography, and I want to begin, as uh, Donna did, by giving a basic definition of sex trafficking. According to the Trafficking Victims Protection Act of 2000, sex trafficking is the recruitment, harboring, transportation, provision, or obtaining of a person for the purpose of a commercial sex act. And the law further defines severe forms of trafficking as sex trafficking in which a commercial sex act is induced by force, fraud, or coercion, or in which the person induced to perform an act has not turned 18. In other words, by our human trafficking law, any child who's found in commercial sex acts is per se trafficked. So what's the nature and scope of the problem of human trafficking? According to the U.S. Department of State, TIP report, the Trafficking in Persons report, which just came out yesterday, uh, the 10th the, the edition, a wide range of estimates exists on the nature and scope of human trafficking. The annual TIP report assesses and rates over 140 countries, and by law soon will cover all of the countries around the world. Uh, a significant number of these countries have some form of human trafficking. The TIP report identifies them as either countries of origin, countries of transit, or countries of destination, sometimes of all three. Um, and the um, TIP report also says that about 12.3 million people per year are in some kind of commercial sexual servitude or forced labor at any given time. Other estimates are as high as 27 million um, uh, per year. The TIP report notes that sex trafficking comprises a significant portion of human trafficking, and according to the report, when a person is coerced, forced, or deceived into prostitution, or maintained in prostitution through force, fraud, or coercion, including psychological coercion, that person is a victim of trafficking, sex trafficking. Sex trafficking can also occur alongside debt bondage when women and girls are forced to continue in pr prostitution or pornography through the use of unlawful debt purportedly incurred through like transportation or recruitment um, or in their crude sale, which then they have to pay off before they can be free. The TIP report also discusses other forms of sex trafficking, including child sex trafficking and related abuses, uh, commercial sexual exploitation of children, child prostitution, child pornography, the sale of children, child sex tourism. All of these are subcategories of sex trafficking. And here the numbers are staggering. UNICEF reports that across the world, over one million children are entering the sex trade every year and that 30 million children have lost their childhood through sexual exploitation. In Southeast Asia alone, currently a million children involved in the sex industry, some younger than 10 years old. Clearly, this is an industry that is taking the lives of women and children and it's got to be stopped. There are many, many links between sex trafficking and pornography and today I wanna to talk about just four. Two are direct and two are indirect. So the first link, some types of pornography actually are sex trafficking. They're one and the same. The pornography industry insiders note that the production of pornography often matches the very, de the very definition of severe forms of trafficking. Force, fraud, or coercion are used to prompt the performance of those in pornography. For example, teen girls, boys, and women are being recruited into the pornography industry with fraudulent promises of legitimate jobs at exaggerated rates, pay rates. And once they're recruited and once they're on the destination site, they're then held by means of debt bondage, physical force, psychological coercion. Their pay for their work performed is given directly to their agent or their trafficker and any debts deducted before money, if any remains, is given to them. The victims are given the choice to perform what are called privates, that is um, a prostitution, illegal prostitution, to pay off their debts. If the victims attempt to leave or to speak out against the pornography industry, they are physically and emotionally threatened to hold them captive and to keep them from seeking help from law enforcement agencies. And there are several um, anti-trafficking organizations that are serving these kinds of survivors right now. The second link, the second direct link, some men are trafficking and or exploiting women and children and recording the acts they perform. In preliminary findings from an international case law database that Global Centurion is building, over 25% of child sex traffickers took pictures or video recordings of the rape, sodomy, and sexual abuse that they were performing on children. This figure is much higher 
if the perpetrators who commit sex trafficking crimes have pornography or child pornography um, on them are counted. Um, what, right now, we don't distinguish when, when, when the charges are, 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 um, are brought. Police are not saying, are these the, the images of those you, uh, you actually uh, were, were abusing, or are these other images of other children that, that, that are being abused or were abused before? Um, so we, th these, this is uh, information we need to begin to, to gather and to disaggregate. The figure is also conservative because one often, char often charges are pressed that don't include the recording of sexual exploitation or the production, distribution, or possession of child pornography. In other words, you might be just charging with sodomy and not charging with the possession of child or production of child pornography. Um, one example among hundreds that, that we've collected in the interest of time, an American who worked as a part-time professor at a Cambodian university was arrested by Cambodian authorities in June 2006 for sexual violence against multiple child victims. When the authorities searched his home, they found three minor female victims aged 9, 10, and 11 that he had purchased, various drugs, children's clothes, rope, and cloth strips used to bind and gag them while he assaulted them, and hundreds of pornographic images, including those of the children engaging in the sex acts, that he engaged in sex acts with. Four additional minor victims, ranging from 10 to 14 years in age, were found as well. He was deported and convicted on seven counts of the Protect, Protect Act that was passed in 2003 in, in the United States. And we have dozens and dozens and dozens of these cases in countries all over the world, and then other countries have the same. Um, uh, okay, I'm gonna, I, I'll have to, uh, the, this will be all be available, all the studies that have been done. Finkelhorn and Mitchell's 2005 study of child pornography possessors arrested in internet-related crimes indicated that 40% of the men in their sample were dual offenders. In other words, they sexually victimized the children and they produced child pornography of them. They're, they're traffickers and, and, the, and they're pornographers. In a study by the Poppy Project, in the UK, women had photographers taken of them by traffickers, for example, while gang rapes were taking place. And they reported that these, these photographs were available to those customers who then came in. The third um, uh, link, pornography is used in sex trafficking and the sex industry to train women and children what to do. In other words, it's used as a grooming uh, tool. In a survey of 854 women and men in the sex industry in nine different countries, half of them reported that pornography was used to train them in what they were supposed to do in the sex trade. In another survey in the UK, 35% of trafficked women were exposed to pornography in the course of being trafficked, including being shown pornography to groom them into prostitution. Um, the Supreme Court of Canada found clear and uncontradicted evidence that child pornography is used for grooming and seducing victims that are then sold. So another, another link there. And I will, uh, there are several other new studies, including a European online grooming project that, that's going on 2009 to 2011 that is also showing the links between sex trafficking and um, this um, training, uh, the using of pornography to train women and children what to do. And then finally, what we've been talking about uh, here today, the, the, uh, the fourth link, pornography creates and provides a rationalization for exploiters as to how and why their sexually exploited behaviors are acceptable. The late Norma Hotelling, a survivor of child sex trafficking in the United States and the founder of SAGE, believed that pornography and other sexually explicit materials normalize prostitution and the commercial sexual exploitation of women and children and allow men to more freely engage in these criminal activities. And then you've just heard also from Dr. Layden, and you'll hear from Dr. Dine, so I'll, I'll, I'll stop there. Um, my, um, my conclusions are going to uh, just repeat what, what uh, uh, Pat has said, that we need to enforce the laws on the books, the sex trafficking laws, the anti-pornography laws. We need to do it now because lives are at stake. Thank you.